Welcome back to Online Super Church. Let's start today by singing to the Lord. Then Mr. Tan is going to come bring us another story from a land far, far away, the land of Vietnam, and how he came to America and then came to know the Lord as his Savior. story time. Uh, last week we left off with Brother Tan coming to America and so we are going to continue with that story. So I remember vividly learning the English language and learning just to adapt to the American culture and it was very difficult for me in the beginning. But one day this event changed my life and going through the ages of about 11 to 13, I remember my parents was starting to argue and fight a lot. I would be hiding in my room because I hear them fighting all the time. And one night my mom came into my room and she was about six months pregnant at that time and she told me, Tan, we are leaving. At that time, at a young age, I didn't really know what was going on, but my mom said, we're leaving, pack up everything. So I did, I pack up my clothing and I put everything in that van and at that night we begin just to travel in the dark. We went through the forest, we went through different area and right then in the morning we arrive at Caldwell, Idaho. There I stay at this new city in this little house with my mom's boss and basically I stay in a little tiny room area next to the kitchen. And there begins my life in this new environment. And there, Brother Tan started learning just to adapt again to this completely different culture. There was a lot of Hispanic people there, and I was just trying to get along with the people. And you know, with a world filled with sin, Brother Tan started getting involved with the wrong crowd of friends. And his life started going downward very, very quickly. And I remember about a year later, after living in Caldwell, Idaho, I moved to Pendleton, Oregon. And in Pendleton, Oregon, nothing really changed either. I still got around a bad crowd of friends, learning bad habits, living in sin. But God has a plan for my life. I remember there was this one guy, his name was Caleb Miller. And he was a friend of mine that I met through another friend. And Caleb would usually take me home after I finished hanging out with my buddies. 
And Caleb would tell me about the Christian faith and me being raised up in a Catholic family. I did not want to do anything with God because I said, God, why would you put me through a family divorce? Why would you allow me to go through all of the circumstances of my life? I didn't want to do anything with God at that time of my life. But because Caleb was just so kind, I decided to go to his church. So I remember that day, kids, when I arrived at Berean Baptist Church. I sat in the back row of the church. You know, Brother Tan really at that time did not have his hair like this long at all. My hair was as short as Brother Scott. And I had my ear pierced. I don't recommend that, by the way, for men. And I was sitting back there, and I was watching people around me in their nice little suit. I was like, I don't belong here, kids. But there's one thing that really attracted me to this church. I remember there was this short Irish man, about five foot tall, standing there up on the pulpit. His name was Pastor Laturco. And Pastor Laturco would be preaching away, and he was telling us about God's love and everything. And I really was just drawn into that. All my anger, frustration, everything just faded away, and I was focused on that message. So I started going to church. I started going to church weekly, and eventually I remember so vividly on June 15, 2011, on that day, this evangelist named Tim Green came and he preached about heaven and hell. And I was sitting there listening to this and I was getting really nervous because I knew at that time I was not saved at all, kids. And when he gave an invitation, I did not want to go forward. I was a little prideful in my mind. I, was, I don't want to embarrass myself either. But then I felt a tap on my shoulder. And I turned around, and there she was. Mrs. Gold, being 80 something year old, asked me these three words that changed my life. Tan, are you saved? And I tell you what, kids, I started shaking. I felt the blood on top of my head draining. I felt white pale. And I was saying, no, I'm not saved. And I remember on June 15, 2011, I came forward, kneeled down, and Pastor Leturco opened the Bible. He showed me that God loves me, how I was a sinner, and because of sin, I was condemned to hell. But God loves me so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die for me on the cross. He not only died, but he rose again. Three days later, he conquered death and sin, and all I had to do was ask Jesus to be my Savior and to forgive me of my sin. And on that day, I did that, and that changed my life. I remember going through a path of darkness before I came to know Jesus. But now, Jesus came to my life, and he showed me the light, and I started following him. But the journey with Jesus had its ups and downs. And I remember pursuing a career in physical therapy, but God had a completely different path for me. He wanted me to go to Bible college, and so I did. Because I followed him going to Bible college, I remember just the journey we had together. He allowed me to see hundreds of people come to know him as Savior. He allowed me to lead my little brothers to the Lord, my cousin, my aunts to the Lord, and God allowed me to serve him. And that, kids, all started on the day I Ask Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. And I hope you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior as well, because it is the best decision anyone can make in their life. Thank you, kids, for just listening to the story of how Brother Tan came to know the Lord. I hope that this is also your story, that you know Jesus as your Savior as well. So kids, did you know that God loves people in all countries? He wants everyone to learn of him and to accept Jesus Christ to be their savior. These new stories from Mr. Tan are to help you and me get a burden for telling other people about Jesus, especially in countries all around the world. Now, I have traveled to many different countries around the world to tell people about Jesus, and I would love it if one day you would do that too. Now this next song we are going to sing goes with our Bible story from today. This story is called, Ten Were Bad and Two Were Good. 
and it's about the 12 spies who entered the promised land. So get up off your couch, and I want you to do the hand motions with us today. it up a little bit. Let's do that again, this time a little bit faster. Before we get into our Bible lesson today, we're going to have one more song. This song is called, Speak, O Lord. When we come to our Bible lesson, we're not coming just to listen to me as I preach. We want to hear from God through his word. If you will listen, God will reveal in your heart his will for you from his word. God speaks. Will you hear? kids, I hope you sang from your heart today. It's time now to get into God's word. So grab your Bible and turn to the book of Numbers chapter 13. I'm going to pray as we start today, and I want you to pray along in your heart that God will speak to you. Dear Lord, I pray as we come to your word, we would have ears to hear and that you would speak to our heart. Lord, help us to understand the Bible lesson today. In your name I pray, amen. Let's now get into God's word. Last week, we began a brand new series on a man named Joshua. Joshua was a slave in Egypt when God called Moses to bring the people out of slavery. God revealed his unlimited power to Israel when he saved them from Egypt by his strong arm. God brought them out into a wilderness. But God did not want to leave them in the wilderness. God had a special land set aside for Israel. It was called the promised land. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 8 we read, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. After about a year in the wilderness, the Israelites arrived at the border of the promised land. They came to the city of Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was a border area before entering into the Canaan land. This was the gateway to God's promise. So God then told Moses to choose out men to go spy out the promised land. 
Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Moses chose 12 men. These men needed to fit certain qualifications. They needed to be leaders from each tribe of Israel. In chapter 13, verse 3, we read that Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. The next few verses give us the names of those 12 men who were spies sent into the promised land. Verse 8 tells us that one of the men was Oshea, which is Joshua from last week's lesson. He was one of those 12 leaders. I want to look at this story about what happened to Joshua. Because there are many principles found in these chapters that can help guide us in our life as well. First, let's consider the incredible land God promised. Look at Numbers 13, verse 23. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and they cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Then verse 27 says, And they told him, and said, We came into the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Joshua and the 11 other spies spent 40 days searching all the land, making maps and gathering items to bring back to Moses. They discovered that it was an incredible land. The grape clusters were so large, it took two men to carry one cluster of grapes. They said the land was flowing with milk and honey. That is kind of like a way of saying there were so many fruit trees that the bees produced far more honey than they could even keep in their honey hives. And it drips onto the ground like a river. And the milk flowing is a way of saying there are so many good pastures for our cows that they will produce more milk than you could even drink. This was an incredible land. The land was also large. It was big enough for all the Israelites and plenty of room for all their children for many years to come. And God promised that land to them. It was theirs to claim. But number two, I want you to see, Someone brought up a problem. Numbers 13 verse 28 says, Nevertheless, the people be strong which dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. In all their map making and grape collecting, they also noticed that the land had people living there, and they were big. And there were cities there, large, walled cities. The people were giants in the land. But there were also a lot of enemies there. Not just one. There were the Amalekites, the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, and the Canaanites. It was kind of like the spies were saying, there's no room for us. God knew there was no room for them the way it was. You see, God was going to kick out all those other people. And just to prove it, God had already had Joshua defeat an army 
of the Amalekites. That was our lesson last week. All these problems were true. But the spies who brought up these problems were missing something that Joshua remembered. The spies forgot God's power. But Joshua did not forget. Third, I want you to see Joshua and Caleb had faith. Look at Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then in chapter 14, verse 6, we read, And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Ten of the spies told Moses and all the people of Israel that they could not enter the promised land, that God was not strong enough to bring them in. Joshua and Caleb tried to convince the people that God is powerful enough and that he will keep his promise to bring them into the land. Who would the people listen to? Who would you listen to? Before we can figure out who to listen to, we need to know what God said. First, God said he would give them the land. In Numbers 13, verse 2, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe out of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one of them a ruler among them. Second, God had already showed his power in Egypt. We remember that from the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall I let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Third, God had already showed he could defeat the Amalekites. Last week we saw in Exodus 17, in verse 14, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. It should have been very clear to the people, like it was to Joshua and Caleb, that they needed to go forward by faith, and enter the promised land. But number four, we see the people refused. Look at Numbers chapter 14, verse 3 and 4. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. The people, they wanted to go back to Egypt. So God cursed his people, and he said that they could not enter the promised land. They would die in the wilderness. Look at chapter 14, verse 29 and 30. God said, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Only two men, older than 20 years old, 
would be allowed to go into the promised land. Caleb and Joshua. Well, how does this story apply to you and me? Well, first I want you to understand, God has wonderful blessings for his children. But you must trust him by faith to receive them. Those Israelites who did not believe, they died without seeing God's blessing. Those blessings in our life might not be money or power or even good grades in school, but it is his fruit in your life. In Galatians 5, we read, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Now, we also must understand other people might oppose God's plan for your life. When Joshua was, was ready to go into the land, the people said, no, we can't go. And that might be true in your life too, especially when you're ready to give your heart to Christ. There might be people in your family who would tell you, don't give your heart to Jesus. You don't want to do that. But I'll tell you from God's word, you need to give your heart to Christ. If you do, God has blessings for you. Third, we see, it is God's will for you to be born again. In 1 Timothy 2, we read, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Others might oppose you from serving Jesus himself. I've had many of my friends who do not serve Jesus because their family wanted something else for them. Their family wanted them to be rich instead. Go be a doctor. Don't serve Jesus. Finally, God always keeps his promises. God kept his promise to Joshua and Caleb, but it took 40 years before they could enter the land. God will always keep his promise, but sometimes it takes a long time. Now, God has promised eternal life in heaven to all who will, will believe. We see in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe? Joshua and Caleb believed. The others did not. Will you be saved? Have you ever placed your faith in Jesus Christ alone to be saved? Jesus died on a cross so that you could have your sin forgiven. We deserved death for our sin, but Jesus paid for it. Look at what the Bible says in Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Then in Romans 5, 12, we read, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But the great news is Jesus did not stay dead. He arose from the dead to give us everlasting life. In Matthew, we read that the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you can do that today if you will repent of your sin and place your faith in Jesus alone. You might pray this prayer. To be saved today. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a wicked sinner. 
I know that my sin deserves to be punished in hell. But I believe that you died on the cross in my place to pay for my sin. And I believe that you rose again from the dead to prove you can give me new life. I repent of my sin and I ask you to come into my life and be my savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer today, please let me know. You can email me and I would be glad to celebrate with you. Now, if you're a Christian, I want to remind you, don't be afraid to trust God. Live by faith, like Joshua did, like Caleb did. God will be pleased with your life if you will trust him and always have faith. Thank you today for watching Online Super Church. What I would like for you to do next is to sign up for our online Vacation Bible School. This year we are calling it Virtual Bible School. It'll be July 13th through 15th. It's going to be right here on YouTube. It is completely free. Every child 11 years old and younger can sign up, and I'm going to send to you a packet with crafts, stickers, even some candy to go along with all of our VBS material. Make sure you get signed up early so I can get it to you on time. And then if you live in the Portland area, I'd love to have you come join us for Super Church at Greater Portland Baptist Church. We meet every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Finally, I have another challenge for you. This week, your challenge is to sing a Bible song and record it on either your parent's phone or your iPad, and then email it to me at the email address on the screen below. Now, I won't post your video because I know some of you don't want others to see you singing, but you're not singing for me and you're not singing for your friends and family. Remember to sing for God. We're not here to show off. We want to please the Lord. Now, this challenge is good for any child in the U.S. who is 11 years old or younger. You must complete the challenge between this Sunday today, June 28th, and this Saturday, July 4th, to be eligible to win a prize. Thank you for watching Online Super Church today, and I look forward to seeing you next week.